Hello there and welcome to My.NA Property with Ashwin Berry. This is the show that explores everything to do with property, space and all the elements surrounding it and would like to thank our anchor sponsor Neo Paint for helping bring this show together. Keeping Neo Paints in mind, they have a current collaboration with Rhino Mama Project and we have the marketer from Rhino Mama Project, Jessica Willemser in studio and we'll be having a conversation about their work and their collaboration with Neo Paint. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neopaints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neopaints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Win big with Neo Paint's Big Five promotion and help save our rhino. Win your share of 200,000 Namibian dollars in prizes when buying Neo Paints this season. Buy any Neo Paints products worth 500 Namibian dollars or more and receive a scratch card for a chance to win. And for every Neo Paints Big Five product sold, three Namibian dollars goes to the Rhino Mama Project. Promotion runs from 26 September to 14 December at your favorite hardware store nationwide. Find out more on neopaints.com. T's and C's apply. Neo Paints, a coat of excellence. Welcome back to My.NA Property. It is an exciting show indeed because joining me is Jessica Willemser from the Rhino Mama Project. How's it going, Jessica? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you here. Yes, yes. No, so let's, uh, let's talk about Rhino Mama. Before yes. we get into the collaboration with Neo Paints, what does Rhino Mama Project do? So the sole mission of the Rhino Mama Project is essentially to save the white rhino from extinction. Mm -hmm. So the way that we do this, we have a very holistic approach. Our main goal is to breed as many rhinos as we can so that we can help repopulate Namibia and Africa. Mm -hmm. So we do this through breeding rhinos. And since our first rhino was born in 2013, mm -hmm. up until August 2022, we have already received 131 calves. Wow. So that's a great, great, great success for the yes. project. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a huge focus on anti-poaching to protect the already existing populations. And mm -hmm. then we also have a conservation education program. So we raise awareness about rhinos, their flight that they are facing, and then we just try to teach children what it's all about. All right. I mean, I think it's very fitting that you say that because for some people, they might be finding it difficult to make a connection yes. between properties and rhinos, but, you know, it's conservation. And, Definitely. you know, part of the property that we collectively have to take care of is the land and the for animals sure. in it. So you're taking care of these rhinos. Obviously, we can never talk about, you know, particularly where the location is. Yeah. But tell us a bit about the space. You said you have a holistic approach. Yes. How does the environment foster this, the environment created by rhinos? Yes. So what we do when we say we breed rhinos, we don't at all mean rhinos in little cages or something like mm. that. It's not the case yeah. at all. So the rhinos are completely free roaming on the property, on the reserve. Mm. So you don't, you know, also if you visit the project, you don't, you're not always guaranteed to see a rhino mm. because the property is just that big and it's, it's nature. Yes. The rhinos do their thing. They live completely naturally, normally. They're not mm. in small confined spaces. Mm. They have loads of thousands of hectares, which they can roam freely as mm. they wish. So it's all natural. They are free roaming. So you can never really know, are you going to see a rhino? Are you not? Just right. because they're simply free right. and the space is that big and natural for them to just live the life as naturally as they would. All right. Yeah. And how long has Rhino Mama Project been in existence? And you said the first Rhino was 2013. Yes, the first calf was born in 2013. Mm. And the project, they purchased their first Rhino in 2011. Mm. So that's when it kind of started for the first time. The mm. first Rhino which was purchased with the whole idea for the project. Okay. And then in 2013, the first calf was born. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So what do you, do you know the calf's name? I'm very curious of this. The rhino. calf's name? Yeah. I know, I don't remember the calf's <laughs> name. There's <laughs> right. so many. So many, right? Yeah. And, 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 and you know, it shows that you've been doing a lot of uh, valuable yeah, so work, many. you know, uh, because you also export these rhinos. That's export or you give them Relocate, to countries. Yeah. Relocate, yeah. Relocate, that's the word. <laughs> exactly. So Perfect. which are some of the countries you've relocated to? And like, how 
generally, you know, does Rhino Mama, you know, choose, you know, where to relocate? Yes. A rhino? So we've re relocated to the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm. We've relocated to Angola and lots in Namibia. Mm. So for us, it's really important. We always make sure that they go to a place where they will live as they do with us so that mm. they're completely free. Mm. The area is natural, so they won't be in, in little cages yeah. or enclosures, none of that. Yes. So we export to game reserves, nature parks, lodges. Mm. So anywhere where they will still have a large area of land to be free roaming and all, right. all that is ethical. That's all the right. biggest uh, yeah, thing. Yeah, ethical is very yes. important. Now, personally, you have quite some experience yes. with working with conservation, you know, across Africa. You were in Cameroon. Yes. That's Cameroon. where you were based before. Right? Yes. Tell us about Cameroon. What was it like there? You know, what was essentially the work you were doing around this? So in Cameroon, I was working at um, a rescue center for endangered wildlife. Mm. So all animals that were rescued from the illegal pet trade, the black market, mm. expats, all that kind of thing. Wow. So they rescue all the animals from there and then at that center we would rehabilitate them so that they would become healthy again. A lot of them of course also have mental yes. disturbance so we would work with them so that they can be most of them that we could um, release again. Yeah. They would be released back into the forests of all Cameroon right. And then the ones which had like injuries that couldn't be released because they wouldn't survive anymore on their yes. own, they would stay at the center and they would be cared for there. And wow. yeah, that you must have awesome. gathered so much knowledge to yes. share in uh, Namibia. <laughs> yeah. And you are Namibian and you studied marketing, yes, which correct. makes me ask, where did your passion for animals come from? Because, you know, yes, marketing, totally understandable. Yes. But in Cameroon, you're dealing with animals here with your with Rhino Mama project. Yeah. Where did the passion start? Actually, my passion has been there since I was really small. Yeah. When I was small, I always wanted to become someone working with insects. Oh, insects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so living in Namibia, you know, there's so much nature, so much bush around mm. us. It's just a beautiful place. And I was fortunate enough to grow up experiencing all of that. Mm. So from a very young age, I was always surrounded by that. Always mm. we had loads of pets and on the farm I was growing up camping. Yes. So I think that's just where my love for animals came from, all from right. such a young age. All right, and it's truly showing in your work <laughs> now. Of course, you joined Rhino Mama last year. Yes. Of course, last year though was essentially kind of like the end of uh, the initial stages of COVID yes. and our head ticket, and how it changed our lives. How did Rhino Mama make that transition? So the one thing which we really struggled with mm. is, of course, an income mm. because COVID had a huge impact on, I think, most yeah. anything that was relying on an income. So yeah. that was a really big challenge yeah. for us. It still is, unfortunately. Mm. So and in 2019, we started also the Kifaru Luxury Lodge and Bush Camp to mm. help support the Rhino Mama project. Right. So it's ethical ecotourism to support the Rhino Mama project financially. Because mm. uh, as you can imagine, it takes quite a lot of an income to <laughs> yes, run yes. a project yes. like this. But that was a few months before COVID mm -hmm. started. So that was really bad timing, unfortunately. Yeah. So that was one of the largest impacts we've had. Mm. But because before that we couldn't really, we weren't exposing the rhinos or the project at all to the outside world. So with mm. that, we didn't really have much of an impact. Okay. But the biggest thing, unfortunately, was the income for the oh, project. Oh yes, yeah, no, understandably so. Yeah. Now we're in 2022. What yes. has this year been like? We're essentially in the last quarter of the year. What's this year been like for Rhino Mama? This year has been, a lot has been going on. Yeah. So we've also, the project is going very well and we've been really fortunate with all the poaching that's been happening in Namibia. So mm. far we haven't had any incidents, mm. so we've been extremely fortunate for that. So mm. it just goes to show that our anti-poaching project has been going very well and it's going very successfully. Mm. And then also in the middle of the year, we received two rhino orphan calves. So both of their mothers pushed the babies away, the oh. reason still being unknown. Oh. So we tried to rejoin the calves with their mothers each separately, but both times didn't work. Wow. So now we have the two calves also in our care, which we look after. So that's mm. also been a big change for us. Mm. So we've had calves in the past, but that was quite a few years ago. Mm. So it's been a big adjustment for us to get back into that and working with the calves again. Yeah. But yeah. And, and you know, it's interesting when, when someone looks at the work of, you know, people who do their best to conserve nature and, and work with rhinos, you know, looking from the outside, you just focused on on the end thing do we protect the rhinos do we do this but y'all get to see for example the personalities yes. of these rhinos and they each have their own varying stories and varying issues you know as Definitely. they come to getting rescued so now let's talk about the collaboration between rhino mama and neopaints how did that come along 
So on the 22nd of September, we had World Rhino Day. So mm. we did a lot of um, awareness for the rhino, see how we can work together with communities in Namibia in general to help us protect the rhinos mm. and help us on our mission. Mm. And then we were really grateful that Neopaints also wants to help us with protecting the rhinos mm. and saving the populations that are already existing. Mm. So they have put Rhino Mama as part as their big five promotion. Mm. So they are giving some proceeds of each sale of their paints goes to the Rhino Mama project wow. to help us with our mission. Oh, that's incredible. Yes, and you know, we, we had a conversation on this show with the CEO of Neo Paints, and he couldn't be more excited yes, awesome. about working with Rhino Mama. And I do understand that um, one of the prizes is, in fact, with some of the prizes, they will paint a charity. Um, you know, they'll, they'll paint a, a space uh, that needs that, uh, that, that uplifting. And it's very yes. good to see Rhino Mama and Neo Paints. No one would have really thought, I mean, what are the chances of Rhino yes. Mama needing paint? Exactly. But, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, but, you know, to see that collaboration from corporates, you know, to uh, con conservation agencies is absolutely beautiful to see. But Definitely. before we delve more into, you know, how, uh, you know, this uh, collaboration will transpire going forth, what has generally been the response of uh, the Namibian public? You know, the people who have been exposed to, to Rhino Mama and its work. How has that response been? It's been overwhelming, really. It's been, we were really surprised to see how the public is involved, mm. how much the public really cares about this kind of cause, mm. especially when the two calves that I mentioned earlier, the orphans that came in, yes. it was, of course, it happens very sudden. It's not something you can plan no, for, yeah. especially financially. And yeah. those two, they, I mean, they drink a lot of milk <laughs> growing. It just keeps increasing. Yes. It's medicine. It's mm. all that kind of thing. Mm. And then we reached out to the public to see if people would be willing to help us with donations of milk and mm. all that kind of thing. And it's just been, like I say, overwhelming yes. because so many people actually donated milk wow. that at some point we had to stop them from donating because <laughs> we were worried that if we have too much, it's going to expire by the time yes. we get to use it. Yes. So yes. we actually wow. had to put a halt on the donations. Wow. That's how amazing the support I, has been. Yeah, it's not, been amazing yeah i think it's lovely and you know Definitely. as we we're saying at the beginning of of this show that you know it's about also taking care of our space yeah. as namibians and being concerned about what happens in it i remember a film uh Bajo and the giants yes. which was on netflix we were talking about it before i was Certainly. privileged to be able to be a part of that and it was one of those moments which really conscientized me to the plight of the rhino because if you've grown up in this part of africa rhinos have been in danger and on the news since you're a kid exactly. you know essentially and then at some point you're wondering would we win this battle you know yeah. it's there's times we, we brought in specialist people who can you know track down poachers and etc but to see rhino mama dealing with the issue from a grassroots mm -hmm. perspective in the sense that can we provide a holistic space for yeah. these animals to flourish you know i think that's a beautiful thing do you have any idea of like how many rhinos have gone through rhino mama project Yes, but unfortunately, that's something I can't clarify. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. Yes, perfectly for my, fine. Just for safety reasons. For safety of reasons, of course. But, that, you know, yeah. yeah, no, without a doubt. And, you know, the yeah. last thing I'd want to do is aid of the wrong team. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, yeah. so let's swing back to this collaboration with Neopaints. How long does it does it go with? Uh, does it uh, stay the Big Five promotion? Is it running for the rest of the year? Was it just for September? Yeah, so it's for a short time. So it's until, if I'm not mistaken, December. No, oh, okay. So then you can purchase your paints before December. So yes. it's to hurry. Yes, to hurry to your paints. <laughs> yes. For Rhino Mama and your paints. Yeah, yes. definitely. All right. So, okay, it runs until December. And what are the plans of Rhino Mama just looking into the future? Um, and in fact, probably before we get into that, I understand you personally also you do some work in schools. Yes. Um, in conscientizing, you know, the young ones on yes. what's going on. Could you tell us a bit about your work? Yeah, so we've just started with a conservation education school outreach program. So what I do is I go visit different schools and then I have a presentation with the children mm. where I teach them about rhinos, the threats they're facing, mm. why, what the rhino horn is being used for mm. and all that kind of thing. And then also just a bit more general, like the difference between the black and the white rhino, which mm. we both have in Namibia. Mm. So just also general knowledge about the rhino. Yes. Just, I'm actually curious, if yeah. just for our viewers, what is the difference between the black and the white rhino? <laughs> That's why we do it. <laughs> yes, I do it, yeah. So the major difference between the two mm. is the white rhino is the one which we are also breeding with, mm. is that they are grazers oh, and okay. the black rhinos are browsers. Oh, okay. That's the biggest difference. All right. So the difference also with the name, people often ask, why is it the white and the black? Are yeah. they different colors? 
yeah. but that's actually not the case. Okay. The white rhino, because it's a grazer, it has the wide, flat mouth. Ah. So it's like really long and flat, which ah. helps it take the grass from the ground to okay. eat. Whereas the black rhino has like a pointy V-shaped lip to help it reach the leaves from ah. the bushes and everything Very like that. Yeah. Wow. So that's the biggest difference. No, I won't lie to you. When you said browser immediately, I thought Google. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> Big difference. You know what I mean? So how have the children been responding to this? Because it's, it's so important. you know. Yes, for, I, I think the more children who can grow up with, you know, Jessica's love for animals, the better we can be. But how's, how's their response to, to these classes, it's these lessons? It's actually been amazing. Yeah. Especially the older ones in high school, they've been responding really well because mm. I think they can just understand it a bit better mm -hmm. because it's a bit difficult to explain to little children because you can't really go into detail about oh, yeah. poaching because yes. it's traumatizing. Yeah. Trauma indeed, and indeed. So for the bigger ones, they've been showing a lot of interest for sure. Yes. And we also do like a volunteering program where people can help out at the project. So we have had a lot of interest in that. All right. And amazingly, also quite a lot of kids are wanting to help us with um, raising funds for the project. Wow. Yeah. So That's they've lovely. been starting their own little projects to help us raise funds and all right. of that. So it's been really amazing. It's yeah. really exciting to see that there is a future generation of conservationists coming. <laughs> yes, indeed. And they're not just focused on the Google browser. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, we were talking about going forth with the Rhino Mama project. Yes. What is Rhino Mama project looking forward to? So we are still now with COVID, of course, we couldn't anymore relocate any mm. of our rhinos because there was no traveling mm. and the animals, they have to fly by plane if it's yeah. for a far country just to help them reduce the stress to shorten the period of travel and all yes. of that. So we're really looking forward to that starting up again. All right. And then also with, like I said, the tourism for Kifaru, which helps us generate an income for the Rhino Mama project. Right. So we are really looking forward just for that to start again now that everything with COVID is calming down. People right. are becoming a bit more relaxed. Yes. So that's something we definitely look forward to because right. then we can also work on the project a lot more, increase it, also increase our anti-poaching. Yes. So it's all... A lot of little things which add up to the greater picture. For right. sure, yeah. Speaking of the greater picture, we all need to do our best to help. How can one be a volunteer? How can one volunteer for an amount of project? So how that works is you would, it depends in which aspect you would like to volunteer. Okay. So like I say, some of the children from the schools are doing their own little fundraising project for us. So that's mm. something we can always appreciate. Mm. And then also physically. So we have this volunteer program at the Rhino Mama project. Mm. So people can come there and you can help us work all the work with the rhinos. So oh. in the drought, like now, we feed mm. the rhinos twice a day. So that's something that needs to be done. Mm. We grow our own lucerne and fodder for the rhinos because it's a big part of the project. Yes. So there's a lot of help that's needed there yes. or the anti-poaching. So there's a lot of different aspects that we right. need help with in the volunteering. All right. And do you have any international collaborators? So volunteer wise, yes, we actually mm. have loads of volunteers All coming right. from overseas. Yes. So because for them, I think also seeing a rhino is something that they it's won't always have yeah. the chance to. Yeah. So that's we have a lot of them coming here. And then we have a lot of other organizations which sponsor us a lot. Mm. So when we do the rhino horn trimming, which is also something we do to protect them from poaching, mm -hmm. we have quite a few of them which collaborate with us and then they donate either funds to help us with the horn trimming because that's really expensive yes. or equipment or just general equipment for the project. Uh -huh. So we have a lot of different ones also from the US, from the UK. Right. So we're really fortunate to have them. Indeed, no, truly. And of course, to have a partner like Neopaints in Namibia. I think Neopaints yeah. has been a part of just about any yeah. Namibians. <laughs> for all we know, this yeah, entire screen is sure. Neopaints. You never know. Um, it's always good to see such a, a, a collaborative, ex, um, you know, collaborative efforts rather Yes. from corporate Namibia in, in assisting with conservation issues. So big five, that's what's happening. You go to a Neo Paints and you yes. get what you need to get there. And then they will tell you how the prizes go. But, you know, some of the prizes include getting paint for charities. And at the yeah. same time, those funds are going to help Rhino Mama Project. Exactly. We love to see it. Thank you very much, Jessica, for joining Thank us. Thank you very much for having us. All right. So I was just talking to Jessica Willems, who was the marketer for Rhino Mama Project. And we were talking about their work as well as their collaboration with our anchor sponsor, Neo Paints. Rhino Mama is all about creating a holistic experience for these rhinos whilst taking care of them and releasing them into the wild, yes. sort of, kind of, sometimes. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but definitely no enclosures. No. No, no enclosures. enclosures. 
closures. All, no, right. no. no All closures. free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's been our conversation with Jessica Willemser from Rhino Mama Project. That brings us to the end of this episode of My.NA Properties. I was just talking to Jessica Willemser of Rhino Mama Project about their conservation efforts and, of course, their collaboration with our anchor sponsor, Neo Paints. And it's fantastic, this Big Five promotion. You can win all sorts of prizes, including getting a charity painted through your efforts. And, of course, they will be assisting Rhino Mama Project in their work. And if you'd like to know more about Rhino Mama Project, their website is rhinomama.com. But Mama is M O double M A, not M A M A. <laughs> Rhino M O double M A. And you can find out the incredible work that they are doing from me, Ashwin Berry, at the Namibia Media Holding Studios. Take care. Neo Paints was founded and established by Hubert Hesse in 1953, making it the largest and oldest paint manufacturer in Namibia. Hesse wanted to make Namibian paint for Namibian conditions and opened the first Neo Paints head office in Vinduk. And up till recently, our headquarters and manufacturing site were located in Bell Street, Southern Industrial. For over 68 years, Neo Paints has created a Namibian legacy of creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation to bring beauty to the harshest environments. We pride ourselves on being a 100% Namibian-owned company and experience utmost gratification to invest in our country and our people. Neo Paints has recently invested in the construction of a new production facility on a 26,000 square meter site in Vinduk. Phase 1 was completed in April 2021, and the second phase was completed in February 2022. This development offers our company the potential to increase production capacity and increase the potential to expand the workforce through a wider distribution footprint into Southern Africa. This new, larger factory lends itself to more state-of-the-art production processes, new innovative product development, and better customer service. Our products are specifically formulated for the harsh Namibian environment by our own paint chemists, which give our company the competitive edge in the Namibian paint market. Neo Paints, a coat of excellence.